why I chose Islam. I mean, I'm not completely convinced that I chose Islam. I mean, in some ways, Islam chose me as well. Um, so it's, you know, guidance is a very strange thing for people. Like I saw an inevitability. When I look back on what happened, I saw an inevitability uh, of, of my uh, embracing Islam. I had some very interesting experiences that um, could be termed mystical or however uh, you want to determine them. But uh, the, the tradition itself, what, what struck me was one, I got to keep all of the prophets that I, I believed in already. And I added in addition, uh, what we consider to be the, the final prophet. And just as very often Christians marvel at how Jews miss Jesus, uh, Muslims also marvel at how Christians and Jews miss Muhammad. Although to be fair to the Jews, they do acknowledge the prophet uh, as a providential force. And, and they do acknowledge him as a, a Noahidic messenger preparing the way for the the coming of the Messiah. So they do recognize that he was a providential force, at least the great, um, if you read George Kohler's book on Jewish theology as a chapter on Judaism and Islam, and certainly the great um, father of Orientalism, uh, Ignaz Golzeher, he actually said that he felt that Islam was the only religion that somebody of a philosophical bent could actually accept. And he wanted to to, to really bring in the gift of philosophy into Judaism that had been, uh, that the Muslims uh, had uh, so richly participated in. In fact, you know, there's an argument that just as Judaism prepared the way uh, for Christianity, it was Islam that prepared the way for, uh, for a philosophical Western Christendom. Because if you look at the transmission of all of that knowledge that comes into Europe, it's quite extraordinary. I mean, St. Thomas Aquinas, who's 13th century, he dies in 1274, and yet he's the doctor of the church. Just look at the number of times he quotes Muslims. I mean, he calls Averroes the commentator. So I think uh, Islam, and, you know, one of the beauties of the religion to me is that you'll find whatever you're looking for in it. I mean, Islam, you, you, it has a, a very simple theology that anybody can understand in Surah Al-Ikhlas, the chapter that says, say God is, is unique, uh, God is completely independent, God neither gives birth nor was God born, and there's nothing like God. So it, it gives you a very simple uh, theology that anybody can understand, and yet embedded in that simplicity is an extraordinary complexity that actually created a metaphysical tradition that Western scholars have spent their lifetime studying people like Henri Corbin or, or somebody. It's it's like uh, Maxine Rodinson, uh, not Maxine Rodinson, but uh, uh, the great uh, Catholic uh, theologian and and uh, metaphysician Jacques Maritain. You know, recognize the genius of people like Al Halaj and things. So within the Islamic tradition, there's just an extraordinary spectrum. You can spend your entire life and have a satisfying life. And I know people that have done this, just mastering the recensions of the Quran and the Qiraat, the, the actual uh, uh, oral uh, expression of the Quran through the, the rules of Tajweed. Um, you, you can spend your life studying exegesis. You can spend your life studying prophetic tradition. You can spend your life studying the great mystics of Islam. We have the best poets in the world. We also have the best architecture. I mean, there's nothing like the Taj Mahal or the Alhambra Palace. And even Western architecture, if you read uh, Stealing from the Saracens, she shows how some of the finest Western architecture was basically taken from the Islamic civilization, including Notre Dame. In, in Paris. So you can find incredible, I know people that just uh, came to Islam through music. I mean, I know some really uh, professional musicians that fell in love with Arabic music, which led them into uh, Muslim culture. Uh, people that um, love just, I mean, one of the most interesting things about Islam is it is a truly universal religion in that you can go from Indonesia to California and find all of these different expressions of the same central truths of Islam with their own local colorings. 
So the West African Muslims are not like the Middle Eastern Muslims. The Middle Eastern Muslims are not like the Indian Muslims. And you have people like, uh, you know, one of the great um, impressionist painters of, uh, of uh, Sweden. I think he's actually considered a national treasure in, in Sweden, but uh, his, his paintings hang in the museum there. He became Muslim uh, in, in jail in, uh, in, um, for, for actually, he, he shot a, a matador because he was raised by his father was a veterinarian and he shot a matador um, because he was so horrified that they were bringing bullfighting into France. And there was such an uproar that they actually released him. Uh, but when he was in jail, he befriended an Algerian who uh, used to recite Quran all the time. And he ended up becoming Muslim and, uh, and then studying in Egypt and then going back to, uh, to his uh, native land. He died in Spain, uh, but extraordinary individual. So you have people like that. You have people that anybody can find what they're looking for. And, and that is the power of the faith, I think, is that it is truly a universal faith. And I think one of the things that Western people tend to do, one, they don't recognize that it's a Western faith because it is. It's part of the Abrahamic faith. Uh, it, it was in Spain for centuries. It's been in Eastern Europe for centuries. Um, and even Istanbul, which is the great capital of Islam for centuries, is half in Europe and half in, 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 in the East. And that's why it really bridges these two worlds. And so there's so much... I mean, well, this why is did part of the reason why I think it makes sense for religious people, Christians, Jews, and Islamic alike to focus on their commonalities in the face of the things that are disintegrating our cultures. We could start by trying to make some peace between us if we're going to consort ourselves reasonably as religious individuals. 